When the population of a colony increases beyond a certain level, there grows a consciousness of a need to swarm, to found a daughter colony. It's called branching out. Hey! Go it! It comes to hire! No one worries about this. The pattern is fixed in communal memory. Hutterites have had to move and rebuild for four and a half centuries. At this, they are professionals. The hair! Half the goods are transferred to the new colony. Everybody packs to move, and the group is divided between the two ministers. Lots are then drawn to see which of the two sets will move. Okay, do it! The new village is laid out on the prairie, consciously to the directions of the compass. It isn't left or right, Shout. but east or west, south or north. No! No pressure! Oh, go it! When this colony gets organized and set up, we want them to be complete. We want to make it appealing, so there won't be any hardships moving. <laughs> you won't uh, drain water away from the neighbors this way, will you? No, it's, no, it's, uh, we, we got the rights there. We, you talk with government officials, they gave us the okay on it. And we're doing everything within our rights, and that's the only way it works good. <laughs> the Hutterian Brotherhood has been called the fastest growing society known in North America. Their strong motivation, hard work, and cohesiveness give them economic advantages that are sometimes resented. This was especially true in Alberta in the 1960s and I think, 70s. I think it's absolutely unfair. We have been criticized we're not patronizing the local merchants and all this, but, but you just drive into big cities and you see where the, where the neighbors are doing all the shopping. But the Hutterites have to be the scapegoats and a lot of this thing, and they're just criticizing for it. Christ promised this in the Bible. If you want to be a follower of Christ, you're, you can expect this. And I think if you get it right now and study it deeply, you can, you can see it's just motivated by enviness and jealousy and prejudice. They think they can compete with us. They look at this big place, a colony being built up, and they think the, the Hutterites have got all kinds of money, and they don't realize that you borrow the money like anybody else, but with uh, our system, I think, is ahead of the individual system because uh, we don't have to pay labor costs. Uh, if we, uh, in, in a community life where you're sharing and you'd have to pay salaries or, or uh, labor, this kind of thing, you, you couldn't afford to build up a place like this. I think it's a high calling to be a Hutterite. And, uh, and I don't think that the good Lord meant it for everybody in the world to be a Hutterite. I don't think so. So you think maybe some other people will get to heaven that weren't uh, Hutterites? Well, uh, that Bible verse when Jesus talks there that they'll come from all corners of the earth, I believe that's, uh, that's very important, that's very significant. A small group of people in Japan have not only adopted Hutterian beliefs and translated the old writings, but accepted communal living and even Hutterite costume. They are part of a greater Hutterian society, which in recent decades has been joined by several Christian communities originating in Europe and now thriving in the eastern United States and England. You have your pick when this is done. Would you want to stay at the old colony or this one? Oh, that doesn't matter. Really? No, don't care where we'll end up. How about the other girls? Don't care. Teach us to care and not to care, wrote T.S. Eliot. To be a Hutterite is not to care about yourself, but to care about obedience, community, God's approval. It is to trust God to reward you manifoldly in eternity for what you gave up in time for the sake of the kingdom.
No one who trusts in God will be put to shame. Were I to be the first one? No, that's impossible, thou true shepherd. Sooner than thy word disappoint me, the very heavens would fall. 